thank you very much uh, for the invitation, for the introduction. Sadly enough that some people already left, but shrinking and shrinking audience is also something that we have to cope with uh, every day. And so uh, let's keep on doing what we are doing and um, without counting who is here. Because people that uh, stay and uh, have a long atom, as we say, long breath, um, are always uh, most interesting. Well, um, it's hard after such an intense uh, day yesterday, I skipped one part of it and today also so many topics are popping up. And I always, uh, when I'm on conferences and I listen to others uh, talking about the, the problematic situation about sponsorship and transparency and um, mediation, I always have the feeling, wow, I, I work in the best institution ever because we always uh, do something with it and we try to. We are not always good in that, but uh, we try to be transparent. Uh, we did shows about uh, really giving the audience insight into numbers and funding and yeah, whatever. And uh, so, But I have to focus on, on the topic that I'm invited for and I'm, I'm very pleased to do that. Um, just briefly, we have many audiences, there's not only one audience, of course, and uh, the Gift at Car, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Leipzig, um, has two main buildings and we try to, um, yeah, to get people also in other spots and other uh, venues uh, into our institution and sometimes they use it like this in a hotel that uh, Kristen Hill uh, designed or um, Jun Yang, uh, Chinese artist, designed another hotel apartment. They book in and sometimes they even don't know that we are a museum, which is kind of really sad and also tells something about us that we have to mediate who, uh, where, where they are. And, uh, so we have a coffee designed by uh, artists every three years. Celine Condorelli is the one who did Bao Bao. And so these are all different audiences that we can address and that we can uh, keep on coming and uh, being associated with, with our house. Um, I'm, I'm there since uh, 2001. I started as a volunteer for two years and uh, turned to be curator since 2003. Um, There's also another uh, spot like the, the library designed by Till Exit and uh, Mark Hamilton. So you see our, our collaboration uh, doesn't end in the exhibition space. We, we try to involve uh, their voice and uh, their, their um, competence wherever we can. Also in the garden house that we just opened last year again, there's a project by a free artist uh, uh, doing a two years international village show. Um, yeah, but I won't uh, tell you about that. This is all some other spots that people address to and come in from different angles uh, of the, um, on the ground of the Galerie für Zeitgenössische Kunst. We have an education department uh, focusing on children and teenagers uh, mainly. They open up uh, into also uh, educational programs with adults. Um, but that's also not my focus. I started um, in 2001 and always uh, put like additional rooms, additional educational environments in the exhibition. Uh, I was trained also as an art educator and uh, so many different um, museums that I visited before with um, like uh, assistances, they, they deal with, yeah, some had like this big gap between educational and curatorial work, others don't. And more and more I, I try to include um, the educational um, um, concept into what I want to say as a curator. Uh, that doesn't always um, uh, end up in an exhibition, but uh, I want to introduce you to three projects. Uh, the bank um, is something that was mentioned yesterday. The, this conference is sponsored by a bank. Uh, bank is important, we need them to support. I worked with a bank called uh, Sachsen Bank, which is a um, Saxony um, uh, County bank um, since 10 years. And <coughs> I started to visit them with our employees and I invited uh, some of them of the employees of the bank to come to our house 10 years ago in another project. 
um, we did calendars together, like there are these awful calendars, end of the year, sometimes coming up from Deutsche Bank or and they always show Blau Reiter or whatever and we tried to combine our collection with their collection and so we came up with a kind of uh, crude mixture from their collection and ours and so got to know each other better. Um, then I always visited the bank and I saw where they have a collection. Uh, they, they, they have it in the offices, but actually it's not curated at all. It's, it was a big um, nothing uh, and um, yeah, and the conditions were really hard because the hallways are quite narrow. Um, the material that the, the works do have to cope with are really diffi difficult, like wallpapers, uh, floor, um, carpet, uh, strange light situation. So I um, rebuilt one of the hallways, um, part of the hallway in our museum and curated three different uh, pieces uh, with their collection and I invited the, the employees of, um, of the bank to have a look at it and uh, give them the chance to, to say yes, that would be nice, just do it and put it, uh, put it up in the bank, so that's what I did. Um, I, I uh, installed it there and it's still on and it's like now eight years ago that I did it. And there was also um, information on this uh, hallway about the project and so people could uh, have like a, a reference um, to this. Um, then in the, um, I think 2009 and 10, Barbara Steiner, our former director, she installed a program which could also easily fill a, a one-day conference called uh, Carte Blanche. Uh, she was also on this uh, panel in the, in the conference in Vienna, which was mentioned today. Um, Carte Blanche was um, addressed to gallerists, um, companies and collectors. Uh, they were invited to uh, bring their um, idea of art or their collection or whatever they want to do into the gallery and had to pay 20,000 um, euro as a rent and uh, additionally uh, produce the exhibition. And uh, she had the idea to really discuss what's happening anyway in the art field. Um, that you get this money and somehow, of course, uh, it influences also progress. So this bank was also invited uh, as it was a long-term partner uh, of the gallery and uh, they, as they don't have a curator or didn't have a curator, they were asking me. And what I did is um, I again went into the bank and asked the employees to give me their works uh, out of the offices, to give me their furniture, uh, the plants um, and uh, their names, and also we put the labels on each of next to the to the pieces. Was always uh, mentioned first the name of the person who lives with this art piece uh, every day, and then uh, which office this is, what's what's the business going on in this office, and and then uh, the artist was mentioned. Um, it's a bank um, where you don't have access to as uh, the audience. They just deal with, uh, with uh, private money um, at, the, at the trade or the, the fair and... Um, um, stock, stock exchange. It's, they don't have counters. Um, so it's hard to enter this building. And especially the, 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 the top level of the uh, Vorstandsvorsitzende of the chief um, of the, the head of the, of the bank. So, but when you do it, you have a wonderful view on Leipzig, which now it's hard to see uh, because of the spotlights. But I put it up in, in, the, um, in our um, window. A screen uh, like a wallpaper so people could easily address oh my city and this is anyway something about mediation our new building uh, I will talk about this in the next project more uh, it's very transparent it, uh, it tries to address people from many sides and it does have it does have just only one level uh, there's no uh, step that you have to um, climb to get into the museum or you don't have to physically open a door and uh, so it's kind of uh, a very in, uh, invitive um, uh, architecture.
So what happened then um, when this uh, exhibition was on was that they all came and had of course a completely different access to the, the pieces that they uh, work with every day now in a, in a, a museum's frame and uh, they brought their friends and uh, because some parts of them like this um, this piece of art that they work in the office uh, got so famous to be in the museum now and um, they could easily um, yeah, connect to, to the show yeah? and uh, mm -hmm. that's what I wanted uh, to reach. So I also installed, I think hardly anybody saw it, uh, one wallpaper on our museum's wall um, where I just wanted to, uh, to, to, to show how conditions for contemporary art is in this bank. Also a piece of a carpet which makes much different to stand on a carpet in front of a work or to be on this uh, museum's ground. And um, this was the highlight of uh, the exhibition that uh, uh, Harald Pfaff, who is this guy here, was so convinced that he really liked uh, the, the, the concept. Um, we installed a meeting room called Tim Eitel, because this work is from painter Tim Eitel, um, uh, in our gallery. So what you see here is a photo wallpaper it's not real window, it's the photo of the window from the 14th floor of the bank. Mm -hmm. And he made a Vorstandssitzung, like a main meeting uh, in, in the gallery. And he said, it was in the morning at 9, and he said, well, everybody could come and uh, could show up, but uh, nobody did. Mm -hmm. It was too, too early. <laughs> okay. So the second um, mm -hmm. project, I'm going to talk about is um, called Puzzle. Um, how to create a collection with more than 40 people. Um, this is uh, the map of the new building. Um, it was built 2004. So we have the main building, uh, which was seen on the first uh, photos uh, in the background, which has altogether like 800 square meter, and the new building has an additional uh, 900. Um, Barbara Steiner uh, invited three young artists uh, to install uh, an architecture that is kind of carrying uh, our idea of dealing with contemporary art. Which means um, in the old building we just have one uh, way to, to guide the people through an exhibition. It's super hard to get them uh, the other way around. Uh, you need tons of arrows saying, no, you have to go that way. But in the new building, um, it's, uh, there's a big variety of accesses and ways through the architecture. Uh, just because uh, where you see all these uh, arrows here, uh, it's a sliding wall that's fixed uh, in the building and you could, like a game, uh, create um, ways. So it's all about uh, thinking. Um, in a new, new exhibition, like in another way, um, about uh, a topic or really to, to always put you in another position. And that's kind of um, the baseline of our uh, approach uh, dealing with contemporary art. I was invited to make the first um, show with our collection in the new building. Uh, in 2010 and 2011, lasting like three quarters of a year. And uh, it was a huge load of um, um, responsibility to install an exhibition with, which lasts in this building, which is so much about changing position and moving walls uh, in a stable architecture. So I decided not to do it on my own. And uh, that's what I do in many times. I just uh, start with some bricolage, uh, thinking about the topic, and I just cut out the architecture. And I came um, uh, into these little pieces, which is more like a tangram game, more than like a puzzle. Uh, so, and each of these uh, pieces I, I gave to a group. Um, they are all mentioned here from 1 to 10. Um, 
Interventionen means I ask three different artists, Carola Dad, Nikita Day Pogacar, and uh, Cornelia Friederike Müller, uh, to deal uh, with our collection. So for each of them that I will now um, name, um, the topic was uh, you can have access to our collection, you can go into the depot, you get a DVD with the whole database, uh, you um, can ask uh, all our staff about the collection, you can also bring other art pieces, you can react with another work on the collection. So it was a wide range of, of freedom, so-called, uh, what, they, what they could do. Um, and um, in the second uh, group was the Förderkreis, the Friends of the Museum. Uh, like five people uh, were participating here. It was a finance officer, um, um, a doctor, a teacher, um, <coughs> um, a writer, and who else? One art historian. Um, and they did something like five. And the first one, three, five, Number three is Vermittlung's team, the mediation team that I work with. Uh, they deal with our collection anyway because they do guided tours, they work in projects with us, so give them a voice too when talking about the collection. GFZ Kaffee Dich is our education department. So there were two groups of uh, children focusing uh, on our collection. Konservierungsmaschine number five means uh, the restorer <coughs> that were invited to. Um, to uh, play um, with the collection in terms of um, conservation. Um, Neuerwerbungen was one room that I installed because there were some productions that we <coughs> did, but they didn't end up being in the collection with Dora Garcia, uh, Dorit Markreiter, Sophie Thorsen, and um, Antje Schiffers. So I exhibited them as a kind of offer to the audience to say, hey, we produced these works, I think they should be in the collection, let's, let's get the money together. Under Sammel <coughs> was a room where two projects were exhibited, uh, one after another. Uh, one was focusing on female artists uh, from Jiggy Art Time. Um, uh, Angelika Richter was invited to, uh, to show works because Klaus Werner, the director who founded Gift ZK, didn't have a focus on female perspectives and also on female positions in the, in the, uh, in the um, collection. So that was kind of this offer. Um, Klasse Intermedia number eight is um, a class from the Art Academy, HGB, Hochschule für Grafik und Buchkunst, which, which is really opposite of the museum. And I invited uh, the class from Albert Urbano uh, to play uh, in one room. So there were five projects from students. Uh, Cabinet is um, a room who was that was curated from our uh, custodian, who deals with the collection anyway on a scientific way, uh, Heidi Stecker. And Puzzle and Puzzle um, was uh, a piece that I gave to our um, uh, um, register from the collection and she, I have to say, doesn't have to do uh, anything with art uh, from a um, scientific way, uh, point of view. She just handles the art and the, the um, taking care and, and the depot. So, um, these were the ten um, groups. Uh, so this is the schedule for three quarters of a year. Um, it's a bit complicated actually to talk about this project in a linear way. I tried to make a book uh, also, <laughs> I will leave it here. <laughs> um, because of course so many things happened um, next to each other in parallel and uh, when in one room there was um, like three projects in another one, there were five changes during the same period of time. So you always have a shift of meaning when the neighbors are gone and uh, something else is popping up and we could always react on that. So um, I was more a bit like the conductor of the whole thing and I gave a lot of trust into what the people uh, developed. That was the schedule uh, in the window so people could follow. This was um, kind of the label in each room with a magnetic 
um, principle of um, labels that could uh, first be here uh, on screen and you could easily get to see what's coming up next and then uh, you, you went into the room and uh, got the names, the titles when it was on and afterwards it went back into the, into the window again. One curatorial uh, statement of mine was uh, that I gave the whole thing a structure in color. Uh, so you could easily just afterwards see where is what and what was in which room and so the photo documentary um, shows it quite well. And these colors are not just colors that I associated with the collection, it's, um, it's um, from the catalog that we have about our collection, um, having like a chronological color um, principle <coughs> running through made by Markus Dresen. So this is maybe really very detailed for you, um, but to show what was uh, in um, coming in each room one after another. So these number one are the first is Carola Dadnik, Tadej Pogacar, Cornelia Friedrich Müller. So they one after another followed here. So it's kind of something that one can study in the catalog. And this is a, a trial to show what was in parallel <laughs> at the same time which is not, uh, of course, the same um, uh, principle as the one on the, on the page before. I don't know if you can uh, follow <laughs> what I'm talking about. So I give you some impressions um, on how the rooms looked like. Um, I will say some, this work, for example, is from Alba Dobano and Tina Abara. It's uh, after this show, uh, was also bought for our collection because they reacted on a project I did with Dora Garcia, Zimmerme Spreche, uh, which is another topic um, because uh, Tina Bara, an artist and professor from Art Academy Leipzig, uh, discovered herself on the cover of the catalog that Dora Garcia did um, and she had these images from the uh, Stasi Behörde. So a whole <coughs> Uh, process began and they reacted with an artistic work, Alba Dovano and Tina Bara, and our friends, uh, which I guided through uh, the, the installation, they said, well, of course, we have to buy this piece. Antje Schiffers is, uh, uh, this is really, you can't really see, Dorot Markreiter. Now they are all in our collection, these works. Back there uh, is a work from a student making interviews with employees of the gallery, talking about their most uh, beliked uh, work from the collection. <clears throat> In the front you see, um, I was, uh, it was funny to see Zendung with their mouse and uh, how this mouse tried to put something together because this piece here is uh, from Klaus Kumbo in our collection, originally called Apfelsine, and it should be like a ball, like an Apfelsine. And our um, um, register, she puzzled and puzzled and puzzled, but she couldn't end up with uh, the original work, and it's not possible anymore. <laughs> That's uh, work from a student, Stefan Mutig, also on the right side. Franziska Jürich, who then afterwards uh, gave her work uh, to our collection as a gift. This is the area where the friends of the museum show their work, uh, like in the back from the, mm, the teacher. This is a piece from the, or curated by the finance officer. This is a piece from Oliver Hange and uh, Alexander Murphy. Ebert Hardcast. So they all did completely something else, and um, interestingly, um, nobody wanted to work, work with one piece at the same time. Um, that was really luck. Three uh, games that we have in our collection. Then the mediation team came up with, uh, um, uh, with a huge. Um, um, research on this work from Rosemary Trockel in our uh, collection, Ohne Titel, um, like a, um, a typical uh, um, Ruhlen, uh, Rosemary Trockel, and they decided not to show uh, Rosemary Trockel's piece in original. Uh, they just wanted to show uh, the 
all uh, reproductions that they found. And uh, so they made a big research on that. But then, um, also, uh, no, I, it's not coming now. Um, this is also from a uh, radiation team. One woman, Christine Müller, she made the so-called uh, fight blood führungen. You got, um, on specific topics, the audience got these sheets uh, guiding you through the exhibition uh, with the topic of um, movement, sound, um, or here, performative aspects. The audience was also invited to write here in front of a piece from Tobias Rehberger. Um, so, and this is now what Tadej Pogacar from Slovenia did with our collection. He created a show and he showed for, I think there was an over overlapping of one week, uh, showed this piece from Rosemar Rietrockel while uh, this uh, work from the mediation team was on. So it's kind of, and it was in the neighborhood, you could see it. So at one point we opened uh, the door, which was closed before. Here it was closed. So to have a go through, because uh, behind that there was a project connected uh, with the mediation team. So it's kind of a very vivid uh, exhibition. There was a constant uh, de-installing, installing. This is from the children. Uh, on the left you see a work from uh, um, Klam Dejanov and Svetlana Hega. And the kids uh, in a project, in a workshop, decided uh, to install this uh, home trainer in front uh, with music, like five minutes. Um, it says five on here. <laughs> um, uh, so you could sit on it and um, when, you, when you had a, a certain speed, uh, there was a song uh, playing and um, it was interesting because a colleague of mine from Hamburger Bahnhof, Daniela Bustron, said, well, if these uh, kids would have done this in Hamburger Bahnhof, if, 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 if uh, this could have never happened. Mm -hmm. So briefly to talk about uh, another approach uh, to deal with audience, I went to uh, Sastavka, that's next to Bruno. I invited uh, Katerina Shida. And she worked with uh, six teenagers on this little town that they went to school to in Sastavka and they actually addressed the artist uh, with a problem that they don't uh, really uh, love to come to Sastavka because it's a city that doesn't have a center and that people don't communicate and there's no uh, real uh, exchange. So what they did, um, I summarize this now briefly, is they brought Sastavka to give Setka and uh, put this uh, floor plan for um, in, in the building. So you see it's a painting, some parts were also wallpapers. Um, this is not very sharp, but they worked for one week in the gallery. They brought uh, with a bus like 50 people from Sastavka <coughs> to visit uh, the second Sastavka in Leipzig. And then they ended up making a catalog uh, which I also leave here uh, to Overgarden, which was financed by the mayor of Sastavka um, to be a, gu a guide through the city. And that's what they did when the show was um, finished. They went uh, with the catalog to Sastavka and went to these uh, spots that they addressed to in the exhibition and uh, made a guided tour with this art project in their own city and the stories. And this is the crew with Katarina and on the right, Radim Peshko from London who did uh, the catalog. So that's it.